Hey everyone. Okay, so I thought it is time to do the um, Bible study on my, my, my talk, my spiel on what do you, we think Jesus views on women's equality and the LGBT community would be in this day and age. So this is one I've studied a lot for. There are things in the Bible that uh, might be uh, difficult discussions and because I am an open-minded person and my lovely cockatoo daughter here identifies as LGBT and she came out and she painted a self-portrait called a pride of two of a rainbow cockatoo last pride and happy pride to everyone too. Don't want to forget that. So, okay, because of that, one of the things I'd like to do is ideally have my ministry one day be, um, you know, I want those to be core values. I want um, any ministry I start to be welcoming to the LGBT community for a number of reasons. One, I don't think God puts limitations on who can learn. Um, and here's why. Okay. So we've already discussed how part of the escape plan for Mary Magdalene, if, um, you know, in the event Jesus was going to be crucified and he seemed to have known that, that, you know, people might be after him, don't you think he would want to get his alleged possible wife and uh, loved ones out of harm's way? Back during this time period in history, women could not travel alone, especially in the Middle East, um, unless they were accompanied by a man. So to get around this, it is my theory that, that a passage in the book of Thomas, in the Gospel of Thomas, may have hinted at this, but it also hints at what Jesus may have felt about women. And so one day Mary Magdalene wants to go study with the men, and she goes to sit down to study with the men, and the men... Uh, aren't having it. They're having issues with this. And uh, Jesus said, you know, um, well, some somebody says, you know, if the Savior found her worthy, who are you to question this? And uh, Jesus is quoted as saying, if I were to dress her as a man in your eyes, would you then turn around and listen to her? And, you know, hopefully, hopefully there he was <laughs> doing two things. He was letting people know how they were going to escape Mary Magdalene, maybe dress her as the disciple John. Um, and two, basically saying, you know, even if she's a woman, she is still allowed to study with you disciples. You know, how foolish are you? So I'm thinking right there, Jesus would have been more open-minded to women being just as equal as men, even back in his time. But you know, society's conventions being what they were, and the fact that he was traveling around to different communities, had to coexist and assimilate into different communities, and, you know, these were the ways back then, where uh, women usually weren't always allowed to study, and I'm thinking Jesus had hoped to change that, and once upon a time, actually not that long ago, I think it was last year during Pride, there was a documentary that came out of a church that is welcoming to the LGBT community and they have a lot of members uh, who identify as LGBT and me and my lovely cockatoo daughter thought this was so beautiful. Um, granted, I know that there are things in the Bible that, uh, you know, speak against that. I'm thinking that that also may have been part of just society's conventions and how men thought and, and maybe a lot of men, you know, still might think that way. And I'm thinking in this day and age, now that we have, you know, legalized gay marriage and stuff like that, the, here's, here's the thing about, about gay marriage. Um, it allows couples to have equal access to health insurance if a member, you know, if their spouse is dying. Um, you know, if they're legally married, they they can help each other in those ways. And is that you know me? And number two, 
there are um, higher adoption rates, I'm thinking. I'm thinking gay couples sometimes consider adopting more than other couples might. And I'm thinking this is such a big need we have in this world. There's so many children that need good loving homes. And so I essentially see that as a good thing. Um, you know, I've known many, many, many LGBT people throughout my life. My cockatoo's a big fan of drag queens and drag shows. And every year we um, do a new thing for Pride this year. I don't know if it's visible up there. She made a rainbow colored flower for Pride that she painted. We're, we're kind of, <laughs> we don't have the supplies that we want right now. I can't get everything. I'm, I'm to order all the time and it's frustrating but um, every year we do a craft project for pride and this year she wanted to do a flower so we did a rainbow flower and I think she's really proud of it and it says happy pride on it and in previous years one year she did a rainbow tiara that says pride princess and I think the very first one she did was just a pride rainbow so this is really important to her, but you know what else is really important that I've learned in my avian research with, with this amazing species called little Corella is that um, they love to learn. Like she's really into learning science. She loves learning about the planets and space, uh, loves to see people floating in space. Um, 